In this video we're going to test the compression on this 300 TDI. In the previous video I warmed up the engine, got it running, worked out what was wrong with the glow plugs, the fuse blown, uh, and this time we're going to use a compression test now that the engine's warm because we want to diagnose if this engine really needs taking to bits. I don't think so. I have a feeling it's a really good little engine but we don't know. So in this instance I'm going to use this pressure tester here this goes up to 1000 psi or around about 70 bar, that's enough. And it was made, oh it's an old box here, this was a Franklin tester. I think it was bloody Benjamin Franklin who made it. But it didn't come with a, a 300 TDI, um, how do you say, adapter. So my friend JP at the machine shop made one. He just copied a glow plug and put the end off one of these regular uh, adapters so he, he remachined it to that and you got a piece of uh, 15 millimeter of 5 8 uh, square uh, hexagonal when I can get it splitted out and he made it and it fitted so all I have to do is take the glow plugs out without disturbing the injectors that's got to be a good thing so let's get this set up but what's the first thing we have to do we must disconnect the wire on the back of the injector pump. Don't do it with the wire on because you can actually fire up that cylinder with diesel that you're uh, testing because the compression will be there. Be warned. Let's get set up. I have not done this before. Well I have done it before but I haven't done it on this engine if you see what I mean. I haven't set this up so you're going to see exactly what I see. So there's the gauge. It's not like the rain gauge with Eric Goldthwaite. I'm going to crank this engine over uh, did I get the wire off? No, I forgot. I was telling you to take it off and didn't even take it off myself. That's off. Let's crank. See what that was? Difficult to read, isn't it? Two hundred and what's those graduations in? I think they're in twenty fives, aren't they? So it's two seventy five, about two eighty. Two eighty for the first one. Let's write that down. Have we got a pen? Yeah. Two eight zero one. Let the pressure off that. Let's set up the next one. The second one. Ooh was 275 again. It's exactly the same. Oh no, 280. 280. The graduations are quite difficult to read for my eyes. 225, 75. Yeah, no, 280, so it's exactly the same. Let's test the next one. Let's see what that one is. Exactly the same. 280. See what the last one does. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. I don't know if you can see that. It's exactly the same. So, that's interesting. Let me take the plug out and I'll uh, get back. Well, this is a mystery according to Toya Wilcox. Um, I just checked upstairs and the compression pressure should be 348 psi. Well, I can't remember what it is in bar, but anyway it's, it's kind of high. And uh, we had 285. 18% down. I didn't work that out myself. But the thing is, it's even Stevens right across the board. That's really odd. So I was just having a cup of tea and trying to think about this and work it out. What if the gasket's too thick? Could that account for it? I'm just going to check. No. It's a two-hole gasket. So that means the compression should be even higher. Now, the customer was saying that it was starting to blow a bit of blue smoke out the back. 
Well, unfortunately, I haven't seen it because when it was outside, it was too cold. And when it was in here, I've got a pipe going through the door. So I can't see. But when I did take the valve cover off, it was puffing out a bit. But there was something I've just noticed on the bench when I put the air cleaner down. Let's go and have a look. Now, I haven't moved this air cleaner here. I haven't moved it since I set it up. But look at this. Look at all that oil that's come out of it. Where on earth has that come from? Well, I can't see it coming through the air cleaner itself. It has to be coming through the breather. That's quite a lot of oil. And that maybe could explain why he said it was blowing uh, bluish smoke out or black smoke. It's very difficult to tell sometimes which is blue and which is black. Let's go and poke the turbo. That's what I like to do on a Wednesday. Or is it Wednesday? No, it's Tuesday. <laughs> Again, these aren't set up. I've just decided to do this. I've got a piece of nice cotton rag. Oh, it's not that bad. It's wet though. Hmm. Yeah, that's wet, isn't it? I tell you what, let's just take while we're here. Let's take the hose off. The turbo outlet. Oh, it's not that bad actually. Oh, no. Not too soon. We have oil everywhere. Can you see? Full of oil. Look at it. Well, not full of oil, but it's got plenty in, hasn't it? Yeah. Right, so it's getting oil in there. Oh, that's <laughs> Let me take the camera off, I'll show you. I'll do it live while you're here, because that's why we couldn't see any oil in the turbo. Because it's all run down here, look. Look at that. Pouring down there, look. That's when I took the hose off. Mm. You know, the car doesn't look bad at all. You know, like it doesn't look... That's me messing about with uh, crown rust proofing. It doesn't look bad. You know, oh, look here. Look at that in here. Thick with oil, look. Uh, well, uh, let me put this back on the camera stand and wash my hands and I'll explain something. Now some people will be saying, to, to check if it's the rings for example on this thing here, uh, just do the same compression test and squirt some oil into the cylinders of a known quantity and that will raise the compression and prove it's not the rings. But the pistons are like this, they've got a dish in them here and of course where the injector comes out you know where the glow plug goes out it goes almost into there so if I put uh, if I put engine oil into there it's just going to sit in that dish anyway it's not going to do anything and of course I don't want to put too much in and cause it to compress too much so it's a bit of a dilemma um, I don't know I don't know the history of this car I know nothing about it um, but there's something not quite right. I mean, we could put a, like an oil trap in that uh, breather. Uh, what do they call them? An oil separator thing. I can't remember what they call it at the moment. We will be shouting it out. But I could put one of them in, but would it cure it? I don't think so. How is it going to get the compression back up? There's something not quite right. Now, I'm going to have to take this for a little drive, or take it for a spin, which could be quite literally because it's very icy outside, and see how this performs. I don't want to work, make work for myself, but it might just be alright. 
<laughs> if you sued a man, he might be alright, I don't know. But it is quite it is quite down compared to what it should be. I don't know, but should I pull the engine out? Well, I'm going to have to take the engine out to do the clutch anyway. And I was going to pull all the running gear out. But if the gearbox is good, I think I might just uh, leave the gearbox in and have a look underneath it and see where this leak is coming from. I suspect the oil leak is coming from the um, intermediate gear on the transfer case. We won't know until we lift it up and get it, have a look at it tomorrow because I've had enough of this today. Um, but we might get away with just taking the engine out and then if they have to take the engine out we'll just take the head off and have a look and do a little test with our diesel test to see if the rings have gone. I suspect they might not be in too good a condition. It's very hard to say. I've never seen an engine that's got low compression right across the board. It just doesn't make sense. Um, head gasket? I don't think so. I mean, we'd have to go down to a one hole and it would be negligible difference. I've got a feeling it's a bit low on compression. Well, it is low on compression, but I've, I've got a feeling that it could be either rings, worn, I don't know. But has it done 179,000 uh, kilometres? I don't know. It, it looks like it's original engine, but the engine numbers are throwing me. And the engine date stamp on the head, hmm, that doesn't, doesn't make any sense. The head's, oh, the head's newer than the car. Or oh, not unless, not unless it is a different year. Let me check the VIN number. So I checked the VIN number and it's a TA, which signifies 96. Which would tie in, because he said it was 97, so it could have been made in 96 but sold in 97. It's no big deal. But the head is definitely 1999. So, are we going to party like it's 1999? I don't think so. Um, as I mentioned, I've got to take the engine out to do the clutch. Uh, he wants me to replace the master cylinders, slave cylinders and things like this. So, I think we might just pull the head off and have a look inside and see what's going on. It doesn't sound knocky or anything like that, but <laughs> you know what it's going to happen, don't you? Oh, we'll pull the head off. Oh, we'll pull the crank off. Oh, we'll pull... And then we ended up doing a full bloody rebuild. By the way, talking about a full rebuild, just to keep everybody posted, if you remember a few weeks ago, it was almost a month ago, I think, that I had that engine block off that reconditioned engine that I sent down to my machine shop, the engine machine shop that is, to check. And they still haven't done it. They still haven't done it. Man oh man, they take this so slow. So, um, what might be the thing to do is um, rebuild that engine that's coming from the machine shop and do a, a swap, just do a straight swap. I don't, I'm not sure. Because I haven't got enough bits on that engine to make a full engine. I, I haven't got the rocker box covers, I haven't got the valve covers, you know, the, all the bits and pieces, the manifolds, turbos, I haven't got anything like that. So, um, I don't know, but I could use the head. I could pressure test the head on this one and use the head off that one, because remember, it was cracked. Funny old world, isn't it? Hey, how it works. But uh, anyway, I think we've got enough for this video. We've done enough testing and things like this. The last thing I wanted to do is pressure test the, the cooling system. I shall do it now, and then I shall come back with the results.